Hi, we're Grace and Josh from Shire Marketing Specialists. In today's module, we're going to be teaching you how to increase your overall visibility online. Now, the internet is a wonderful place. For consumers, it's where we go to buy new clothes, make dinner reservations, and read reviews on our next holiday accommodation. For businesses, it's where we set up shop and focus our marketing efforts all in the hopes that consumers will be inspired to drop by our digital storefront and then eventually convert. So what exactly does online visibility mean? Well, online visibility is the overall presence of a brand or its products or services in the general consumer environment. A business can have a great website, but how are users expected to find it if it's not visible? Search traffic can only direct so many unique visitors. The goal of an online visibility strategy is to ensure that a brand is represented across all popular online channels. Online channels include search engines, local websites, social media sites and directories. So why should you invest in increasing your company's online visibility? Well, having a strong online visibility allows people to find your website on their own. Increasing your chances of converting your website or landing pages traffic into potential customers. It can also help your brand's reputation and help you stand out from the competition. Looking at strategies for increasing online visibility. Ideally, a strong online visibility and marketing campaign should combine as many of the following practices as possible. They should support each other in increasing your company's discoverability. The subtopics we are about to discuss cover creating valuable content, use of keywords, your buyer's journey, analyze the level of competition, keyword content formats, keyword mapping, acquiring quality backlinks, website load speed, Having a mobile friendly website. PPC and retargeting. Social media. Online PR. Listing within local directories. And website audit. That's a whole lot. Now we're going to discuss the importance of creating valuable content. These days content is king. But what does that even mean? Well, the online consumer no longer wants to deal with blatant advertising attempts or poorly designed website. They want a seamless, fast and entertaining experience across all channels. And they want you to be a really good storyteller too. Who are you? Why should they trust you? And what makes your product or service any different from the competitions? Do you really understand their needs? Sounds like a demanding task, right? It sort of is. Content marketing requires a steady investment from a business. It takes time, energy and money to develop a successful content marketing strategy and plan. However, if executed properly, the payoff has the potential for huge returns on your investment. The key thing to remember here is that the content marketing efforts shouldn't be centred around pushing your personal agenda. The focus must always be on creating valuable content for your audience. Okay, now it's important that you use the right keywords. Choosing the right keywords for your content is half the battle when it comes to attracting organic traffic to your website. The other half of the battle is creating killer content. <laughs> but don't be daunted, we've divided the task into six easy to follow steps. If you're ready to begin, this is how you can choose the right keywords for your content. Here we go. What are keywords? Keywords are the words and phrases that people type into search engines. They're also known as search queries or SEO keywords. Start with keyword research. This involves about how potential customers might be searching for your business or website. You can then use keyword research tools to expand on those ideas and find even more keywords. It's a simple process, but two things need to be true to do it well. You need to have good knowledge of your industry. And you also need to understand how keyword research tools work and how to get the most out of them. Consider something we call search intent, 
Search intent, also known as audience or user intent, is defined as the purpose of a user search. It is the primary goal a user has when searching a query in a search engine. Many times users are searching for a specific type of answer or resource as they search. When it comes to running a business and building a successful content marketing strategy, we can't stress enough the importance of remembering search intent and letting that be the driving force behind the pieces of content you create and how you create them. And just why is this so important? The more specific your content is to, to various search intents, the more users you can reach and at different stages of the funnel. From those who are still to discover your brand to those looking to convert, you can increase your chances of reaching them all by focusing your efforts on matching search intent. Plan your buyer's journey. One of the most important things you'll do as a business is to deeply understand your customer. That includes understanding who they are. This is defined as the customer persona. How they find you, known as the buyer's journey, and what they need from you. The term buyer's journey has become a buzzword. Once you strip back the marketing jargon, the buyer's journey can be described, defined as the path your prospective customer takes from awareness to purchase. For most businesses, the buyer's journey is only three steps. Sounds simple, right? The hard part is making sure that you connect with the buyer on each of these steps. Okay, the first step in your buyer's journey is always awareness. And awareness is two-pronged. The buyer recognises there is a problem or a specific need. The buyer then discovers your product or service as the solution to their problem or need. The types of content to focus on for the awareness stage include blog posts, guides, ebooks, landing pages, detailed service pages, social ads, pay-per-click ads. Step two, consideration. The next stage is perhaps the most critical. At this stage, the buyer already has a rough idea of what they're looking for and is now exploring their options. Types of content to focus on for the consideration stage include blog posts, email marketing, trials, demos, testimonials, case studies, remarketing ads on social media. And the third step is decision. Yeah, that's right, it's decision time. The buyer knows their problem and they're aware of your solution. They're aware of your competitors too. So at this stage, your buyer is ready to buy. Their credit card is poised in their hand, but now the question becomes, are you the right choice? Will you provide the ultimate solution that solves the buyer's problem? Your goal during decision stage is to minimise the buyer's hesitation. Start by making a list of possible reasons why your buyer may say thanks but no thanks. This will guide the type of content and offers that you create to convert decision stage prospects into buyers. Okay, so will they hesitate on price? If you think they will, offer limited time discounts. Perhaps they're afraid of being scammed, so offer them a money back guarantee. Perhaps they're sure that you're the right solution. If so, offer a case study with clients that match their buyer persona. Remember that most buyers don't buy based on simple logic. You can't appeal to buyers with just the facts because that won't sway them. There should always be an emotional component to your marketing during the decision stage. For example, you can compel your buyer through fear. I must buy right now to lock in this fantastic low price. You can compel them through trust. This company has a solid reputation and provides a satisfaction guarantee. Or perhaps you can try and compel them by belonging. They will feel that they respect and admire the people in these testimonials. Now, it's important to remember that buyers will always justify their buying decision. Your goal in this stage of the journey is to reduce the buyer's resistance to purchase. The problem is that most brands focus on the awareness stage, but then go silent when it comes to the other two stages of the buyer's journey. However, it's important to note that the buyer can meet you during any stage of their journey, so you've got to be prepared. Analyse the level of competition. When was the last time you ran a competitive analysis for your brand? 
And most importantly, do you know how to do one efficiently? If you're not sure, or if the last analysis you ran was a quick perusal of a competitor's website and social media presence, you're likely missing out on important intelligence that could help your brand grow. Every business can benefit from regular competitor analysis. By performing a competitor analysis, you'll be able to identify gaps in the market, develop new products and services, uncover market trends, market and sell more effectively. As you can see, learning any of these four components will lead your brand down the path of achievement. Now, it's time to think about the correct content format for your keywords. Content can help you build trust and authority. It does that by showing your expertise and giving visitors and customers helpful information. But here's the thing. No single type of content will appeal to every visitor. That's why it makes sense to vary your content. The content formats listed below will help you get started. These include blog posts, long form articles, original research, video, infographics, images, case studies, white papers or reports, ebooks, presentations, webinars, quizzes and polls, podcasts, checklists, emails and new email newsletters. Now, not all of these will suit your business target audience, so we suggest you handpick those that work best for you and your ideal customer. Keyword mapping. As we mentioned earlier, keywords are the backbone of SEO. Using the right keywords can make or break your SEO efforts when trying to rank in the number one spot. Keyword mapping is the process of assigning or mapping keywords to specific pages on a website based on keyword research. Based on your mapping process, you are able to then make specific on-page SEO recommendations or actions to help make the page more relevant to the mapped keywords. It also then informs both internal and external link building as you generate and distribute content in the future. Once you understand the process, it is quite simple. But if you require further help on this, contact us or your web developer. Keyword research. You need to know what keywords you're going to be mapping to your website. Doing keyword research properly is essential to this process. The key here is to not get caught up in having to rank for every good keyword that you find. Try not to lose the focus of the exercise. The purpose is to map keywords for two reasons. To map keywords to your current content and highlight where there are holes in your content, to, in which case you need to generate new content. Once you have a solid list of keywords within your industry and a potentially geographical location, you'll want to move into mapping them to the most appropriate website pages. Right, a current relevancy <laughs> Right, a current relevancy check. This is the process of assigning your list of keywords to the pages that you want to rank them for. To do this, look at each page of your website and ask what page is the most relevant to this particular keyword. The first step is to make a list of all the pages of your website and the position of each page within your website. From there, you can figure out which pages are the most relevant in terms of both a person browsing a website, with this as their entry point, and Google as a search engine. To understand how Google already understands the keywords of your website and whether you need to change your listings in the search engines, you can check it in Google using the site modifier plus your keyword. Now, there are premium tools that can speed this process up or you can have the SEO on your website checked. We do offer this here at Shire Marketing Specialist, uh, but you may have already had one that was offered from um, Uncover the Cotswolds. Acquiring quality backlinks. Backlinks are one of the most important ranking factors, if not the most important. But don't forget that they need to be quality backlinks in order to make an impact. The more backlinks your website has from authoritative domains, the higher reputation you'll have in Google's eyes. Nowadays, link building doesn't have a great reputation and it's often associated with link spamming, but it shouldn't be that way. You can build backlinks using smart techniques and without spamming other sites. If you are in a boring niche, 
Getting quality backlinks can be challenging. Techniques include guest blogging, niche directory listings, internal backlinks, Q&A websites, content promotion, and writing testimonials. Okay, something to really consider is also your website load speed. Now, if a, if a user clicks through to a page on your website and finds themselves waiting more than just a few seconds for your page to load, they're likely to leave your page, which can cost you a conversion. Your website load speed can be fixed by yourself. We suggest having a look at Google's page speed insights to help you. Google's page speed considers several factors for an overall score, load time score. Having a mobile friendly website, the number one most important reason you need a responsive website is that your customers are using their mobile. In fact, 57% of all traffic is done on mobile devices. So that means that more than half of your customers are checking you out from their smartphones. PPC and retargeting. PPC remarketing is a way to re-engage potential customers who have already demonstrated an interest in a company or product. It helps you remind these customers of the product and to entice them to follow through and make the purchase they didn't make the first time they visited your site. Google Ad Retargeting is a powerful online marketing technique because it allows you to stay connected with your target audience even after they leave your site. By presenting your display remarketing banner ads to visitors even as they browse other parts of the web, you are gaining brand exposure and becoming more recognisable to your target audience, raising trust and making them more likely to purchase from you. Remarketing ads have much higher click-through rates and conversion rates than typical display ads. Okay, social media. Now, we're sure you're well aware of the impact of social media and its ability to drive traffic to your site and, in turn, increase conversion rates. For your business to benefit from social media marketing, you need to invest a lot of time, effort and money. The initial stages are the hardest, as building a following on social media can take months. It's a slow, rolling ball to begin with, but once it catches momentum, your social media marketing can snowball into a big propaganda tool for your business. Online PR. Also known as digital PR, it's a link building tactic that involves creating a story or piece of creative content and distributing it to target media to secure coverage that includes backlinks to a client's website, thereby improving SEO and overall search rankings on Google. Digital PR gets massive results, especially when it's paired with a strong SEO game plan. For local businesses, a well-planned local SEO digital PR strategy will focus on getting your business featured in online publications that write about your local area. These could be local newspaper websites, local blogs written by bloggers living in the area, reviews from local people who have purchased from you, and local events or charities you sponsor. Now, here are some of the most common types of digital PR strategy. Publishing articles online to gain high quality backlinks. Networking with journalists and editors to gain backlinks. Publishing press releases and syndicating newsworthy content to earn press features. Blogger outreach to gain backlinks and mentions on relevant blogs. Influencer marketing to gain mentions on influential social media accounts. Affiliate programs that pay a commission to bloggers who refer customers to your business. Offline press events or blogger events that aim to gain online coverage. And also sharing and syndicating infographics. Listing within local directories. If you want to make it easier for people to find your small business online, getting listed in online directories is a powerful way to help you do that. It's also a good way to build your website's domain authority because directory listings will increase the number of backlinks to your website helping you rank higher in search results, which can ultimately bring in new leads for your small business. So it's a marketing strategy well worth investing in. Website audit. Now, we do have a whole module covering how to audit your own website, but in terms of online visibility, ask yourself the following. How usable is your website? Is your website mobile friendly? 
Does your website function on all the major browsers? Is your web design and development visually appealing and professional? Do you have a call to action on every page? Is your contact information on every page? Is it easy to contact you or buy from you? Does your website load quickly? For a deeper explanation of carrying out a website audit, please do check out our module covering this. So in conclusion, building brand awareness can be a difficult and time consuming task involving research and clear strategies. However, with the expansion of online advertising, businesses now have access to a number of digital methods to gain visibility as well as the more traditional marketing approaches. Our number one rule, just keep working at it. There's no quitting when it comes to keeping your brand visible. Actually, that's a really important takeaway. The more you try, the more you succeed. Thanks for watching, guys. If you need any more help, visit www.shiremarketingspecialists.co.uk or email us at info at shiremarketingspecialists.co.uk. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.